do you ever wonder what quality of life is like in other countries? What is life like for people living in poverty around the world? Somalia is among the worst countries in the world in terms of quality of life. Today, we are going to be analyzing Somalia and how its quality of life compares to that of a more developed country like Canada and what can be done for increasing the quality of life. Somalia is a country on the eastern coast of Africa in a place nicknamed the Horn of Africa due to its pointed shape. Somalia is bordered by the Gulf of Aden to the north and the Indian Ocean to the south and to the east. Somalia has an estimated population of 15 million people as of 2018. The predominant religion in Somalia is Islam. There are different languages spoken in Somalia, but the main dialects are Somali and Arabic. Somalia's capital is Mogadishu. Its current president is Mohamed Abdullahi Formajo. Somalia tends to have an unstable weather with a mix of rain and extreme heat, which causes most people to have a nomadic lifestyle. Now that you know a little bit more about Somalia, let's talk about the quality of life. What is quality of life? Quality of life is the well-being of a person or society in terms of access to basic needs and happiness. There are many indicators in determining the quality of life. The main ones are education, healthcare, economy, food and clean water, and social aspects such as leisure time or time with family and friends. All these aspects include life expectancy and are what people need to have a good quality of life. The average Canadian person has access to all these things, meaning that Canadians have a good quality of life. The first indicator of quality of life is income. If a person wants to live a good life, they need access to basic needs which require a good income. 72% of people living in Somalia are in poverty, meaning that they can't afford proper homes, education, healthcare, and food. GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product. It is a monetary measure to figure out the economic activity in the country. A good economy means that the country can invest in things like education, healthcare, and programs to better the lives of people, but a low economy means that funding is low and people don't get what they need. Somalia's GDP is around 7 billion US dollars, which means that they rank among the lowest in the world. GNI stands for gr Gross National Income, and it is the amount of money a country makes per year and GNI per person is a GNI divided by all the people in the country. The GNI per person in Somalia is around 413 US dollars per year, which is once again one of the lowest in the world, and people are living on only a dollar per day. Canada's GNI per person is $46,920, which is exponentially higher than Somalia, meaning that Canadians can afford all basic needs. Canada's GDP is $1.7 trillion, making it a very stable economy that can invest in its citizens. The next big indicator is access to education. This means the number of people who have access to school, which is essential for people to learn and have more opportunities in life. Studies have shown that more years in school result in a higher income and quality of life. In Somalia, only 30% of children go to school because many people can't afford it or don't have access to a school. The literacy rate is a percentage of people within the country that can write a simple sentence and do a simple calculation. The literacy rate in Somalia is 37.8%, which is the seventh lowest in the world. This means that so many people can't read or write, and in Somalia, gender segregation and inequality are prevalent, which on with only 25.8% of women being literate. In the following picture, it is clear how classes are segregated, with mostly males going to school. Canadian children have high access to education. Over 95% of people go to school, with 30% earning a university degree. Canada has a literacy rate of 99%, and it is often considered the most educated country in the world. A good education mean means people have a chance to live a good life. When a country has less than half its people read, there is a problem. Many children that don't go to school in Somalia end up being laborers and many of them become child soldiers. Water is the second most important thing to sustain human life besides air. Clean water is extremely important for everyday uses and for maintaining good health. In Somalia, only a third of the population has access to clean water and many of those have to travel long distances together. Without clean water, many people die of dehydration 
or of dangerous diseases obtained from dirty water. Many diseases such as cholera, diarrhea, dysentery, hepatitis, and typhoid. Some of these diseases are preventable. However, people don't have access to good health care and proper treatment for these diseases, so death rates are really high. People live in constant danger of acquiring a disease and many children are at risk. Canada has many lakes and sources of clean water as well as many good water treatment plants. Unlike in Somalia, 100% of Canadians have access to clean water, 75% having instant access. The other 25% use a different water system and that involves most of the native population. Canada has 20% of the world's fresh water and has very good access to it with low water-related infection rates. Having cleaner water and better health care in general can lead to living a longer life and the way to see if a country has a good health care system is by measuring the life expectancy, birth rate, and mortality rates. The life expectancy in Somalia is 56.71 years, which puts them almost 20 years below the world average. The leading cause of death is disease, and that is mainly because of the poor sanitation and the hospitals that in, are mostly in the private sector, so people can't afford them. Another reason for low life expectancy is because of the high crime rate and the child and infant mortality rates. The infant mortality rate, which is children under one for every thousand births in Somalia, is 76.6. That is due to malnutrition, dirty water, and inadequate care. The child mortality rate is the number of deaths in children under five for every 1,000 children. And in Somalia, the, the rate is 121.5 per thousand children. Once again, these numbers are due to the poor health care and extreme poverty that these children are born into. Speaking about birth, Somalia has one of the highest birth rates in the world. For 1,000 people, 42 are born each year, and the fertility rate per woman is 6.4 children. One of the reasons for this is because two-thirds of the Somali population is under 30 years old. Many children are born and raised into terrorist and extremist groups and women don't have their rights. The women are also aren't educated well enough. In Canada, people tend to live longer lives and get really good health care. Canada's life expectancy is 82.3 years, which is almost 30 years longer than in Somalia. Another reason why Somalia has low life expectancy is that people are unhappy with their lives. They're in constant anxiety because of the dangers of terrorism. In Canada, people are some of the happiest in the world and health care is easily accessible and responsive. Canada's infant and child mortality rates are 4.3 and 5 respectively. That is very, very low and it shows how children are very well taken care of and fulfill all their needs. The birth rate for 1,000 in Canada is 10.3 with 1.5 births per, per woman. In Canada, women are treated more fairly and in other, than in other countries and have a good education. Now that all the kin indicators of quality of life have been noted, it's time to compile everything and look at the Human Development Index to determine the overall quality of life. The HDI is a way of measuring the quality of life in a country by accounting for literacy, income, and life expectancy. The highest score is a 1, that would be a perfect country. Somalia is considered a failed state by the UN because of its fragile and unofficial government. This means that Somalia doesn't have any HDI reports since 2012 when the HDI was 0.258, which at the time would have been the fifth worst in the world. This means that Somalia has little to no school expectations, very low income, and all the things that suggest a low quality of life are shown in the life expectancy. Canada, on the other hand, has clearly has a very good quality of life and ranks 13th with a score of 0.922. This means that Canada has a very good education accompanied by excellent income and life expectancy. Clearly, we have seen that Somalia has a very bad quality of life. Somalia has been enduring civil, civil war and armed conflict for over 20 years. Somalia is known for the pirates that terrorize and hijack ships in Somali waters and the terrorist group, groups that plot attacks and constant kidnappings and murder. When asked why they committed so much crime, they responded with money. This is because people are in poverty and going to extremes just to survive. In 2008, there was a Canadian and an Australian journalist who were kidnapped in Mogadishu. 
They were held captive for 15 months and during constant torture and abuse. The kidnappers wanted a ransom of $1 million, but the governments wouldn't pay the money. Stories like this one go to show how we can't expect things to get better if we don't help countries like Somalia. Doing these crimes is their way of life and the only way that they make money. If we give them a better quality of life, they could go on to do other jobs and give up their life of crime. There are many things that could be done to better the lives of people in Somalia. The quality of life is so low that any little change can make a big difference in these people's lives. The first thing that can be done is to get the government to start caring about its people again. Somalia is considered the failed state and its government is unstable, allowing people to do whatever they want and it makes them feel like they are forgotten. We need the government to start investing in its people and making a difference because if no one does, nothing gets better. The first step is to make education more accessible. This could be done by building more schools, lowering fees and giving the girls the right to go to school as well. This would create more opportunities for better jobs that can lift people out of poverty. If the education is higher, income and quality of life gets higher as well. The next thing that can be done is to improve healthcare. There already is a program in place called the Health Sector Strategic Plan. It is meant to introduce universal basic healthcare throughout the country. This means that people would be able to get access to public healthcare. The following picture shows a Somali boy benefiting from the program and receiving a polio vaccine. The final thing that can be done is to raise the quality of life is to install water treatment plants and ways to get recycled clean water back to people in Somalia. One way to do that is to get wastewater treatment. These, the, these plants like the one in the picture can be used to bring clean water to people. Another way to get clean water to people is to install plumbing and hand pumps so that people don't have to travel kilometers just to collect water. These systems can stop preventable diseases and increase life expectancy and lower child and infant mortality rates. Now that we know what can be done within Somalia to create better lifestyles, it is time to talk about what you can do at home to help. If I were Somali, I would feel forgotten. People are left to starve and the government doesn't care about them. If we spread awareness and raise money, we can show Somalia that we are here for them. On a world level, we need to stick together even if it sounds ironic during this time. Hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future, and goodbye.